Most video editing programs come with a variety of effects or filters that you can apply to your video clips to, to give them a special look or a special feel. And uh, Edius is uh, no exception. It has a, a robust library of uh, video effects. And, and in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at uh, some of these effects. And as we show you how to work with them, you'll be able to uh, apply the principles to all of the effects that come with Edius. Now, perhaps uh, the first thing to do is to show you where to find the effects. It's actually in the uh, effect palette. And so depending on how you have designed or arranged your windows here, uh, this could be showing up a little bit differently. I've kind of combined all of my palettes into my bin window just to kind of, because we have want to save on real estate here working with this one screen. And uh, so my effects palette is actually in my bin window. I just have to tab over to my effects palette. You may have it uh, arranged a little bit differently and maybe even have the effect palette uh, together with your sequence marker and information uh, in a separate window from your bin window. But at any rate, what you need, what you're looking for is the effect palette. And here, uh, this is the same place actually that where we had our transitions. What we're looking for this time is a folder called Video Filters. And uh, let's open that up. And we see that uh, there's a wide range of filters here that you can experiment with. Now we won't actually have a time to go through each one and show you how each one works. But I think as we look at uh, maybe five or six different filters that you'll be able to get uh, the idea of how to work with the filters and, and be able to experiment on your own. So let's maybe go up and uh, try dropping on a few filters. Uh, the, under the color correction now, uh, Edius has some good color correcting tools. We'll take um, a whole tutorial uh, to take a look at this three-way color correction tool. It uh, warrants a whole tutorial in and of itself. That's where uh, at the end of your project uh, you may want to be going through your your timeline and looking for those shots that uh, may not have had the best color balance when you uh, shot your video and uh, and you can go in and with this uh, three-way color correction tool be able to make some nice adjustments there. For a quick adjustment uh, you could just try uh, throwing on a color balance. Let's maybe go back here to this uh, one clip where the father is climbing up the uh, tree the palm tree to collect his sugar or his palm juice and we see that it's shot in the early morning light there and uh, if we should decide that we want to kind of maybe change the color temperature a little bit we could do that with our uh, color correction tool and uh, you know just uh, play around with the uh, the gray balance a little bit uh, till we get something that's just perhaps a little bit bluer greener. Uh, however, you might also want to experiment with the, the color balance. It is good to know about and uh, this allows you to not only uh, make a slight adjustment to the color but also work with chroma, uh, brightness, and contrast. So you may find that there are certain, certain clips where you don't really need to change the white balance, but you do want to work with the chroma, the contrast, the brightness of it. Uh, that's a good filter to know about. The color wheel is uh, very similar to the color balance. Let's, uh, it allows you to, uh, again, adjust the colors and contrast. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the monotone. Yeah, let's drop this on the clip. We see that it changes to black and white. But in much the same way that we were able to customize our transitions. We can also do the same thing with our effects. And so we're not just stuck with black and white. If we double click on our monotone, we will open up a window where we can make some adjustments to this and uh, maybe get something like kind of a sepia tone look by changing these slider bars. And you can experiment, uh, slide back and forth until you get something that uh, kind of looks more like a sepia tone look. And once you're happy with that, uh, just go ahead and hit OK. And if you like, if you know that you'll probably be wanting to use a sepia tone filter a lot, you can save this 
in the same way that we did with the uh, transitions, just right click on the effect that you have changed and choose save as current user preset. And now when you go back to the effects bin, you'll see that your uh, version of monotone has been saved as monotone one. You can go in and rename that to say uh, sepia tone. And at any point, uh, if you want to uh, remove those effects, of course, you can go back to your information palette and either uncheck the boxes or just uh, point to the effect that you want to delete and go ahead and delete that. All right, well, let's maybe take a look at some of the other filters in our list here. We can maybe close up our color correction folder and uh, makes a little more room for the rest. The first one, anti-flicker, is uh, something that you can throw on a graphic. Uh, let's say our opening title here. Uh, sometimes, depending on the font that you're using or thinness of the font, uh, some titles might uh, kind of show a little flicker. Well, if you drop on this anti-flicker effect onto your video, it uh, will reduce the amount of flicker that you might uh, see in something like that. And if you think that uh, dropping that on has made your title just a little soft, well, you can open up the anti-flicker by double-clicking on it and reducing the power of the effect. And that might uh, scale back a little bit on any softness that might have uh, happened to your graphic. But let's maybe take a look at some of the ones that you might use uh, more often than not. Uh, this mirror effect, uh, as you might guess, uh, very similar to uh, creating a mirror effect in Photoshop. If you drop that onto your video, it will reverse the, your clip. Okay, what else? Uh, motion blur. I find this very helpful. In fact, uh, for this tutorial, I brought on a clip that uh, can demonstrate this better. Yes, here it is here. This shot of uh, the street shot from Cambodia. If we were to drop on this motion blur effect, you'll see that it kind of adds a, a dreaminess to the uh, clip. You'll see that the buildings behind the people are just fine. They look just normal. But anything that's in motion is given a kind of a blur. And uh, if that's just too much blur, once again, click on the effect and uh, scale back on the amount of blur that you want to apply. And you might want to find a happy medium in between the two there. Now, you're not limited to just uh, applying one effect to a clip. If you want uh, to kind of add to the effect here, we might uh, drop on a soft focus as well. So let's just go ahead and drop that onto our clip as well. And this adds kind of a glowy, soft focus effect, which in addition to our motion blur can look quite nice. Let's maybe scale that motion blur back just a bit. And now with the two working together, uh, it enhances that uh, kind of feel, look and feel of a dream effect. Okay, what are some other effects that we might uh, find useful uh, in a typical project? Uh, one that you might uh, find that you need uh, occasionally is a mosaic uh, effect. Let's say that the individual in your documentary uh, needs to remain anonymous. What you can do is uh, drop on a mosaic to your clip, and this adds kind of a blockiness to the video. And as we look at it at first, we see that the woman is still quite recognizable. And so we need to go into the effect itself and add to the blockiness just by sliding our little bar across. You can see you can get to the point where it's just one <laughs> color there. Let's scale that back and you can decide at what point the person is obscured enough. And uh, you also have a variety of different types of mosaics that you could choose from as you work with that. Finish her high school and then go on to college. 
and uh, and yet uh, you may decide, well, all we w- all we need to do is just obscure the face. We don't need to obscure the rest of the video. Uh, is it possible to do that? Now, if you're coming from a previous version of Edius, uh, the filter that uh, you'd be looking for was called region, and this allowed you to define a very specific region or portion of your video that you wanted to apply a, a, a second filter, like a mosaic. However, uh, the region tool or filter is no longer with us in version 6. However, it has been replaced by a much more robust tool, and uh, that is called the mask. And so let's bring the mask onto our uh, clip as well. And now we can go into our mask and uh, what we want to do is uh, choose the inside filter, uh, check that box, and then the ellipse tool. And then we can kind of, much like in Photoshop or other drawing programs, create a uh, oval shape by pointing to your image and uh, dragging down with your mouse. And uh, once you've got it in place, you can kind of fine tune adjust it there. Maybe stretch it out a bit more if you need to to cover her full face. And then what we want to do is choose our filter. Over here we can select a filter and go in and this brings you into your filters. You can go and find the mosaic. I believe the mosaic uh, t filter is probably the best uh, most common way of obscuring a face. So let's choose it. Hit OK. And uh, yet as uh, we look at this we see that you know it, it certainly isn't obscuring it very much. We need to add to that and uh, we'll see that once once we have selected our filter that we have another option lighting up here and that allows us to actually work with the filter itself, set it up. And this is where we can add blockiness to it and uh, while it doesn't show up in the actual uh, preview window of the mask, if you have your record preview window open we'll see uh, the results there of your work as you slide that button across and uh, just get to a point where you believe that uh, she'll no longer be recognizable and once again you're not uh, restricted to that uh, default pattern of the mosaic you can have it with this drop down menu choose uh, a variety of different types of mosaics I'll, uh, I'll just stick with the plane and uh, once we've got it to the level where we think it'll be fine, then hit OK. And, uh, and that's probably fine. Uh, we notice that we're working with quite a, a sharp edge on our oval, and we could try and soften that up. There's a tool down here uh, where it says Edge, and we can soften that up by clicking the box there and bringing up our amount of pixels there so that uh, it will give a nice soft edge to the mosaic and it kind of blends in with the uh, surrounding video better and uh, so that looks pretty decent let's hit OK and play it and see what we got Benny and all my children we are going to do our very best to work out a way so that Benny will be able to finish her high school all right, so that's uh, pretty decent. Uh, however, you may run into certain situations where the person is moving around in the video so much that she uh, goes outside of the region that we've you've defined uh, with the mosaic blur. So let's see if we can find an example on our timeline of a clip like that. Okay, maybe this shot of Vani here, where the video starts out uh, in this portion of the video, the but then she moves her face further in. So let's uh, work with this one, bring our mask over to this clip, drop it on, and go into our mask, and with our filter tool, our inside filter tool selected, let's go after uh, the mosaic again. And uh, we haven't defined a region yet. Let's do that. Choose our ellipse tool and cover her face there.
And uh, so now using the setup, we can add more blur to it and we can observe what we're doing up in the corner there in our, pre our record window. We get it to a point where we no longer recognize who that is and soften up the edge so it blends in with the surrounding video better. And uh, if we were just to uh, leave it like that, uh, we can see what would happen as she leans in. I think that my favorite subject is mathematics. She goes outside of the region that was defined and she could become recognizable. And so what we need to do is uh, set up a motion path or a moving path for the region that we've defined so that it'll follow her motion and continue to cover her face. And so let's go back into our mask tool. And as we look down to this lower region of our tool, we see that uh, we can set uh, key points along the path of the video clip itself and define uh, where our region is going to be at any given point in the clip. So let's go in and uh, click our mask. We really only need to work with the inside portion of the mask uh, for this example of using the, the mask tool. And uh, so we just need to have that one checked. But let's go ahead and set a key point, add key point by pressing on the button over here. And uh, we do that because it's perfectly fine where it is now. And uh, with the, your mouse, you can slide this kind of timeline cursor across and watch. And when you see the point where she starts to uh, move outside of the region that you've defined, well, that's where you want to uh, start moving your mask. And you can just point to your mask and start moving it over. And once you've got her face covered again, then we can set new endpoints. And let's just continue to play it out to see if she goes outside of that region. And uh, maybe just a little bit there, she kind of goes down a bit. So we could maybe uh, move the mask just one more time to completely cover her face and add another key point. And now as we play the video through, we see that... Uh, I think that my favorite subject is mathematics. The mosaic region kind of follows her face as she goes. and. And uh, so this way you can obscure a person's face even if they're moving through the video. And you can do it very quickly in EDIUS. In some programs that I've worked with, this is a very tedious, time-consuming process uh, where you have to uh, you know, spend a half hour doing something like this where we just did it in a matter of uh, a minute or so. Okay, so the mosaic effect. Old movie. We should probably take a look at that. So let's say that... Uh, there is a clip in your project or maybe a series of clips that you want to kind of give the feel or the illusion that it is old movie uh, back from, you know, the 1940s or 50s. What you can do is use your, your old movie film filter. Just drag it onto the clip that you want to affect. And let's take a look and see what that looks like. Some of my friends have fallen from the trees and have been badly hurt. It would be nice if I could well, as we look at it, we see that, uh, yeah, it kind of looks like an old film, but man, that, uh, that flickering just looks a little artificial. Let's see what we can do with this. Um, let's maybe back off on that flicker uh, quite a bit. And uh, maybe some of this frame jitter, it just seemed to be bouncing around way too much. I kind of like the border darkening. Let's turn that on. It kind of gives it a kind of an old film look to have the uh, corners dark, more darker than the center part. We might want to add some film grain. Just check the box there. Uh, so, you know, because today's cameras are so clean and beautiful, uh, it does, just doesn't look like an old film reel at all. So we might want to add some grain to it. Not too much, but... And uh, because we have our scratch noise on, we see that uh, Edius is adding some scratch and other noise to our reel. And you can adjust the amount of uh, your scratches or, or the age of your movie clip. Uh, you can uh, choose the amount of dust and hair is going to be on the video showing up as it plays. So a lot of different things that you can experiment with there. Let's take a look at this. 
Some of my friends have fallen from the trees and have been badly hurt. It would be nice if I... Okay, that's uh, much better. Uh, it's still, the color looks just a little bit too much. Maybe we could uh, go in and add our sepia tone to that and see how that might uh, change things. Remember, we had a, defined a sepia tone up here, up in uh, color correction. Yes, here it is. Let's go ahead and drop that on. Remember, you can have more than one effect on any clip. And uh, that's just maybe a little bit find a safer way to make it too harsh. Let's see if we can't just adjust this a little bit. Letting the trees and have been badly hurt. It would be nice if I could find a safer... That's not too bad. And once you have uh, one clip the way that you want, if you wanted to apply these same filters the way that you have defined them to other portions of your video. Let's say we needed this whole group of clips to have that same effect. Well, we can just uh, select that group of clips using our lasso effect. And once we see them all selected there, then we can go up uh, to our information palette. We see that uh, the uh, filters that we have defined are still in place there. And uh, with your control key held down, you can select both of those and just drag them to any one of the uh, clips here and let your mouse go. And now that filter, or those two filters, the way that you have customized them will be applied to that group that you selected. So you don't have to go in and uh, individually for each clip that you need to affect, apply these same filters and, and customization to each one. You can do it in one sweeping motion. Much like we did uh, with our transition, uh, applied it to one clip, uh, that group of still shots, and it, the transition went to the whole group. All right, well, that should give you a pretty good idea of uh, the effects that are available in EDIUS and the way that you can apply them, customizing them, and uh, then if you like, saving, saving your own presets using the customization that you have applied to any given filter.